Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy hump day. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody. Uh, we're getting close to finishing this week, week 12. Uh, don't forget to continue working on your um, podcasts. We have another podcast for this week. And if you're missing podcasts, feel free to complete those this week. Make sure you guys are sending me uh, notifications when you upload assignments. If you're uh, late and you're after the due date, make sure that you're sending me notifications. Try to catch up as best you can. I know some of you are finding, uh, have some current challenges getting to class. And uh, just want to make sure that all of you know that you have access to all of the activities in Notion. Make sure that uh, if Notion is working for you, if you're trying to find out what we're doing day to day, check out Notion. And uh, there's a calendar view that I think is fairly straightforward in finding, uh, what, finding out what we're doing. Um, anybody have anything today they want to get off their chest? Here's a phrase, get off your chest. Before we get into today's activity, is there anything that anybody wants to get off their chest? What does that mean? What does that mean? Get off your chest. Does anyone have anything you want to get off your chest? And how would you, in English, how would you paraphrase what is the literal meaning of this idiomatic expression, get off your chest? How would you, because it's not literal, right? It's not like you have something on your chest and I'm saying remove it off your chest. What do you think that means? If, for example, if you have like a something you want to share. Right, it's something that you want to share. It, it could also be some if something is bothering you, right? And you just want to, you know how sometimes when you uh, say something, you feel better, like it's bothering you before, but then when you say it, you tell the person or, or whomever, then you feel better afterwards. Okay, so it, it kind of means all of those things. It means getting off your chest means something that, it could mean something that's bothering you. Today, I'm just asking in general, or it could be something that's bothering you if something is bothering you. But the question is, does anyone have anything you want to get off your chest? Not the chair. Oh. <laughs> All right. Um, I am scheduling extra classes for anyone who's interested. Make sure that you're reaching out, sending me messages to schedule time. Um, and when you're asking about scheduling extra time, maybe get with a couple of classmates, see if anyone else is interested as well. We can work in small groups right, if anyone else is interested, but make sure that you're reaching out and asking questions and getting uh, the answers that you need and getting the support that you need uh, in all of your classes, not just my class, of course, but in all of your classes, okay? Make sure that as we get close to the end of the semester, uh, now's the time to really catch up and make sure if you're behind in some of your assignments, especially in, in my class, uh, we have a lot of smaller assignments that we're mainly doing in class. Make sure that you're keeping up with those. And I think the easiest way to keep up is to check teacheries, check your grades. Right, so make sure that you're checking this because um, at the end of the semester, right, there's, there's really less time and less th options really to do much about 
you know, changing your grade or, uh, you know, making adjustments. Okay, so we're getting uh, fairly close to the end of the semester. We have uh, four weeks after this week, right? We'll start unit four next week. And uh, just want to make sure you guys are keeping up with, with the work, okay? All right. Um, today, I want to continue yesterday's activity. And I'm going to share my screen. Yesterday, we started working on a Word document. And all of you chose a person, a famous person. All right, so think about you assuming this person. You're going to be uh, assuming this person or uh, acting as if you are this person in an interview. So we all of you should have your names at the top as a level one heading. And then below your name, you should have the person that you chose, the famous person. It could be a living person or a dead person. And then below the famous person is going to be the interviewer, the person who is going to create questions and pose as an interviewer to the famous person, right? To the famous person. Yesterday, I asked everyone also to list out four verbs. What I would like is for everyone to go into the Word document and let's see here. You know what? Let me ask, is uh, Fernando, are you here? Yes, I'm here. All right. Um, before we get into this, I forgot to ask. May I want to make sure that everyone has a partner, and I know uh, Fernando is having um, some problems with other classmates or some conflicts. And so I want to make sure that everyone is partnered up. So... Uh, I'm looking here at the list. Fernando, have you added your name yet to this document? Yes, uh, I added, but I think that it is a. Uh, oh, there it is. The bottom. Okay. There it is. All right. Okay. So before we start, I want to ask: Is does everyone have a partner? And if not. We need to find a partner for Fernando. So uh, let's see. Does anyone need a partner? Or has anyone not added your name to the list that's in today's class? We've got 34 of us here. How many do we have? Okay, I show 35 on the list. Looks like we've got 34 of us here. So everyone here in class today has a partner? Yes. Yes? All right. Yes. So, all right. So there's, let's see, how can we do this? So Fernando, why don't, um, we're going to need a volunteer. I need one volunteer to also work with Fernando, since we have everyone else's teamed up. And I'm assuming everyone has signed up as an interviewer. Well, are there, are there any volunteers to work with Fernando, have maybe work with uh, two other people? We need one person who's willing to get some free uh, karma points. Any volunteers? Can I the teacher? Right. So what I'm gonna what I, we need for Fernando is to add um, an an interviewer, second person 
So one person would interview two people, and in that case, um, yeah, I'm going to ask that maybe you, uh, you can create, maybe instead of four questions, maybe three questions for, for both for both, uh, b both people. So, anyone willing? Me, teacher. Is that Monse? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Monse. So, can you add your name, Monse, underneath Fernando? All right, and I'll ask uh, yes. if you can just maybe create three questions for both of your the people that you're interviewing, and. We'll do it that way. So thank you, uh, Monse, for volunteering. All right, so... You're welcome. So what I would like, guys, is to take a look at the list of verbs, and I'm going to ask everyone to list the verbs, uh, for example, as uh, Monica has done here. All right, so list of four verbs, and list them to the right of the colon. Okay, so check your your space and uh, list out the verbs <clears throat> from left to right, right after the colon in the same line. So please go ahead and do that at this time. Remember that the questions that you're, I'm sorry, the verbs that you're thinking about, these are going to be the main verbs in the questions that you're going to pose, that you're going to create. All right, so think about the questions that are going to relate to the famous person, because again, you're asking questions to the famous person as your classmate is pretending, pretending to be that person. All right, so go ahead and list out the verbs left to right, just to the right of the colon, please, so we can bring all the text up. We don't have a lot of white space here, okay? Bring in, go ahead and try to go into the Word document and make those changes. Now, the next step is to create four questions or one question for each of the verbs that you've listed. Now, what kind of questions? First of all, I want us to think about open questions. So think about something significant about this person that you want to ask. Something, maybe an experience or some sort of a historical uh, situation that you find interesting, that you want to know more about, or even a reflective question. It could be a question that you want to ask this person where you want to get maybe the opinion of this person, right? Knowing this person, what kind of uh, response would, would you want to get? What kind of information would you want to get from this person? So think about the four verbs that you've included and create one question for each verb, and the questions should be open questions. Now, what are open questions? What are closed questions? What's the difference? That the closed questions are just answered by yes or no. All right, that's one, that's one type, right? So yes or no. So avoid yes or no questions. Avoid yes or no questions. What are other types of closed questions? I don't know. <laughs> what other types of questions could be? And think about the type of answer that you would get. Right, just like we thought, okay, if the answer would be yes or no, so we don't want to ask those types of questions. What other types of answers would be answering a closed question? Can you repeat the question, teacher, please? Sure. What other type of questions 
Or what other examples of closed questions can you think of in addition to yes or no questions? Those are one type, but there are other examples of closed questions that we want to try to avoid. Can you think of some other examples? When? Sorry? When? All right. It could be when questions. For example, when were you born? Right? How tall are you? What's your favorite color? Right? Where are you from? Right? So some of those questions are likely to be closed questions. Right? When were you born? Well, if you're just going to give a date and then that's it. Right? So we want to include open questions so that the interviewee, the person that you're interviewing, will likely speak more about what it is you're asking. All right, so when you're thinking about your questions, think about open questions. Make sure that you have one of your verbs in each of the questions that you're going to ask. And that's it. All right, so I'm going to give you a few minutes. I want to, and I'll be looking here. I'm going to be online here as well. I'm sharing my screen, so let's look at the Word document. Uh, go ahead and begin listing the four questions, all open questions. Uh, make sure your verbs are up listed from left to the right, right after the colon. And let's go ahead and begin that, okay? And we'll be looking and I'll be giving you some feedback here in real time as you create your question. Remember how to uh, create a question, right? The question word, auxiliary, subject, main verb. So let's begin uh, listing our questions. Think about something that you want to know about the famous person that you're interviewing. Okay. All right. And it could also be something reflective. It can be a reflective question. Right. You can ask, what do you think? But remember, you're asking the famous person, not your classmate, what he or she thinks, but the famous person. So I'm going to create the questions like depending on the verbs my partner wrote, right? Uh, actually, the verbs that should be written out should be the, from the interviewer. All right. So, for example, uh, Elizabeth is going to interview Estefana. So Elizabeth needs to list her verbs here. Learn, and I don't know if she wrote these or. But the idea is that Elizabeth is going to write, in this case, learn, write, and achieve, because she's going to be creating the questions below the verbs to ask, um, well, in this case, Sean Mendes. Okay, does that, okay. Does that make sense? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so make sure, guys, that whoever's writing the verbs, this is the interviewer. This is the person right above where the verbs are, right? So um, looks like Nellie has sing and love so far. These are the verbs that she's going to include in the questions just below that she's going to ask Max Schneider. The four questions, you guys can list it out using uh, the bullet points here or the numbering in Microsoft Word, so you can list them that way.
Hopefully everyone has had a chance to read up a little bit if you need to about the person that you're going to interview so that you can come up with some good questions to ask this famous person. If you already know something about the person, great. If not, uh, you need to find some information to include in those questions. I would um, also, for the most part, try to avoid questions that begin with what. Sometimes, in fact, most of the questions that begin with the word what tend to be closed questions. So really, how questions are typically really good options. Uh, how, why, those are probably the most common. When is okay if... It, if the question itself is talking about some experience, and we're, we're going to talk about here in a few minutes about setting up questions, but um, when is okay as long as it's, again, talking about an open idea. Like, when was your birthday is not a good option, but you could say, when did you decide to become a musician? And maybe there's a story there, right? That's what you want from your famous person. You, this is what you want from the interviewee. You want a story. You want uh, an explanation, a description about whatever it is you're asking. So think about good questions that are going to promote a conversation, that are going to promote someone telling a story, explaining, describing. Maybe you want to compare. You want to ask a question. Well, how was, how did you feel about being a musician as a child versus being a musician as an adult? For example, so think about maybe ways to uh, open a question up so that the famous person can compare two situations or two experiences. Think about the answer that you want. Think about the answer that you want when you create your question. Now, think about... Um, the idea here is that everyone is famous. If you're going to ask uh, a question about being a famous person, I would suggest focus more on the actual profession of the person. Like if the person was a singer or an actor or, uh, or a, some sort of musician, whatever type of profession it, it is, think about how you can maybe be a, a little bit more specific. Try not to be too general. So here's the, here's the, the challenge, is an open question that's not too general. Ask yourself, can I be more specific? Can I take some aspect of this person's life and focus on something a little bit more specific, something maybe related to something that happened in the early part of the, their career, or maybe even a certain movie, right? It could be about a particular movie. If we're talking about an actor. But I would suggest avoid using the phrase famous person. How does it feel to be a famous person? Right? Think about a more of a specific question about the person. And again, this might require that you do a quick search in Wikipedia or, you know, some website to to get some ideas about what to include in your questions.
So, um, uh, Tanya, I don't. Are you here? Let me open up. I don't have the uh, list here. Me, teacher. Did yes, Tanya. Uh huh. Yes, I'm here, teacher. Okay, I'm looking at your questions. Um, so, I like the second question. Why do you consider you love yourself? Why do you? Um, Think about the the other questions instead of using a what question. Maybe think of using maybe another why question or a how question, perhaps a when question. Uh, think about open questions. Okay. And if you know, for example, uh, taking the the favorite food. If you know what the favorite food is of this person, and this is just an, as an example. You can ask a question about, well, um, you know, what, when do you eat this food? How did you become to like this food? Right? If you know what, what the food is. Instead of maybe just asking what the favorite food is. But there, there are going to be only four questions or more? Just four. Only four questions. So but you I guess like to make them open. Try to yeah, try to make them open questions and try to think of a specific event, uh, uh, you know, something that maybe was or something an achievement that is that's very uh, that's associated with this person. So that it's okay. not like a really open open question, like not too general. We can be, it needs to be open, but I want it to be a little bit more specific. Think about an event, maybe a song, if it's a musician, or, uh, you know, some sort of performance that you want to ask a question about. Okay, okay. All right. And after that, today, my my classmate is going to replay my question, or it's going to be tomorrow that. Um, it's going to be today. I'll explain here in a few minutes what we're going to do next. Yeah. And go ahead also, Tanya, and move your verbs to the right of uh, the colon up here, just so we can bring that your questions up closer to your verbs. Okay. Okay. All right. Also, Monse, if you want to bring your verbs up as well, I would list them from left to right across horizontally across the screen just to bring your questions up closer to your verbs. Uh, I already did, teacher. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, appear. Uh, okay, maybe it's a little slow. That's fine. Yeah, if you already changed it, that's great. Uh, maybe it's just a little oh, slow. With uh, with Luis Enrique, I don't yet. Ah, okay. I'm going to do it right okay. now. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, so we can bring, guys, our, our, our verbs up to on the same line, like Vanessa's done here. Hey, Jackie, you can bring those up, just up to the, up one line, if you wish.
All right, guys, I'm going to share the link to the uh, Notion page. This is where we're working today. I'm going to go ahead and explain now the rest of the instructions for this task and give you the rest of today to complete the task. So once you have listed, and it's important that everyone first list your verbs and your questions here to the Word document. The next thing is the interviewer who's going to ask the questions needs to practice setting up each of the questions, setting up a question. Now, what do, you, what do I mean by setting up a question? How do you set up a question? Any ideas? How do you set up? All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, explain now the rest of the instructions for this activity. Um, the And I shared a link in the chat of the Notion page where we're working. All right, so the next step, once you have finished adding the, the verbs and your, your open questions to the shared Word document, I want you to think about how you would set up each of your questions. Now, what do I mean by setting up a question? How do you set up a question? Any ideas? Any ideas? How do you how do you set up a question? Teacher. Yes. Set up is like to change, no? Set. Um like can you give me an example? Like in my phone I have an app that says settings. Okay. Well, this is a little bit different because it's a phrasal verb set up. And this is what makes English so difficult because we have so many phrasal verbs. And phrasal verbs are idiomatic, right? They're not logical, like set up. <laughs> like what does it mean to set up a question? There's a lot of things we could set up. You could set up a stage, uh, like a music stage, a, a theater, right? You could set it up. And volleyball, if you guys are into sports. Go ahead. To get in. To get in. Well, in this case, a setup, set up a question simply means that you talk about something. You provide context before you ask the question. So remember we have questions. Questions are interrogative sentences, right? And we also have what's called declarative sentences. A declarative sentence is just uh, an affirmative sentence. And so to set up a question, right, means that you talk briefly about something and then you ask a question, right? So um, like if you're going to ask a question, how do you feel when you act in a new movie? All right, so this, think about a particular movie, right? So when you were acting in the latest Star Wars movie, right, you worked with these actors, and you also worked with a lot of technology, right? Now, that's not a question. That's just a statement. Now I'm going to ask my question. How did it feel to act in front of a blue screen or green screen, whatever it is, green screen, uh, while you were, when while you knew that there were going to be some special effects going on behind you or something like that. So to set up a question means that you're going to speak briefly about something and then you're going to pose the question. Then you're going to ask the question. So for this exercise, what I am going to ask everyone to do is to include one to two sentences or statements, 
right, before you ask each of your four questions. Now, I, I'm not going to ask that you write this down. I'm going to ask that you write out the questions, but not the setup. I want you just to prepare for the setup. Now, what kind of information are you going to call on? Maybe you need to check Wikipedia if you had to look up, or maybe you already know enough about the context of the question. But this is going to also help us think more specifically about some, more, uh, some uh, specific aspect that we want to ask about. We don't want to offer, we don't want to ask too many general, too general of a question. We want it to be fairly specific. If we're talking about Elton John, well, he's been around for a long time. There's a lot of things you could ask, right? And think of some aspect of his life that you want to ask about, that you would ask him personally. And then think about how can you set up each of your four questions. So, when you are posing your questions, you're going to have a setup for question one, and then you're going to ask question one. You'll have a setup for question two, and then you'll ask question two. You'll have a setup for question three, you'll ask question three, you'll have a setup for question four, and you'll ha then you'll pose question number four. But again, one or two sentences, it doesn't have to be, you know, sometimes people set up, they talk for a long time before they ask the question. Uh, for our purposes, one or two sentences is enough. But I want you to, I want you to, for each question, have a setup. Again, you do not have to write out the setup unless you want to. It's not, I'm not asking for you to write out the setup. I, I would rather you just prepare and and speak not to write it out in fact maybe it's best not to write it out i want you to try to practice creating the language to set up your question and then you can read word for word the question that you wrote out in the shared word document all right so if you think of like the interviews that you've seen right most of the time the interviewer will set up a question. It's very seldom will they just ask questions with no setup whatsoever. All right, guys, does that make sense? Or do we need to look at more examples? Teacher, we're not going to write this setup, verdad? That's correct. Oh, oh, no, I would... Re I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm only like going to write the questions but the setup no correct okay. that's correct and then and i didn't uh, understand for example uh later i'm going like to like join and i meet with my classmates ah, okay and i'm going no to... all right so yeah so let me go ahead and explain the rest all right the rest of the activity okay. all right so okay. i want you to prepare for the setup Write out the questions. Make sure the questions are written in Microsoft Word. Now, when you're finished and you're prepared to ask your question, now this is how we're going to do the actual speaking part of the activity. We're going to do it in Flipgrid. All right, so I shared the Notion page where all of you should be able to access the Flipgrid. So if you want to... Open up Flipgrid and go to uh, go to the uh, site. And I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully, you can see my my screen. Um, I've included yesterday's class. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. All right. Yes. All right. So just like we've done before, each one of you is an interviewer. So each one of you is going to begin a conversation in Flipgrid with your, your setups and your questions, your four setups and your four questions. So each of you will have your, um, will have a, uh, a recorded response, all right? A video recorded response. Now, when you submit, I would try to title your response the name of the famous person and 
perhaps the first name of your classmate, just in case there are more than one, uh, you know, maybe there are more than one famous people. I'm not sure. I didn't check. Uh, but at least include, yeah, I would include the famous person in the title of your response in Flipgrid, and then in parentheses, just the person's first name. Now, once everyone has uploaded their interviews or when your uh, interviewer has uploaded the response, then the famous person is going to respond in Flipgrid to the questions that were posed. It's really important that you respond to your classmate, the interviewer, so that the response is inside or within or nested in the the, the uh, response so that we don't have all of the the responses and the uh, the questions you know on the on the main page okay does that does that make sense guys yes right so um, and if you mistakenly record a response and you don't respond to the interview or just delete the video and and find your your um, the interviewer so everyone needs to as a famous person needs to respond to the interviewed questions by by responding to a, a, as a video response all right so this is how we're going to conduct uh, this interview it's not going to be a live conversation it's going to be first the setups and the questions and then a response as of as the famous person answering those questions now, I'm going to ask that you speak around four to five minutes as a response. So think about the questions that are posed, that are asked, and, and you decide how you want to respond, okay? You don't have to respond to all of the questions. You decide which questions to answer and to the degree how much you know detail do you want to talk about answering each of those questions i would much prefer that you speak more deeply about one question than talking very lightly or superficially over four questions four questions but that's up to you but i want everyone to try to speak four to five minutes and don't write anything out. The only thing that's going to be written out, that should be written out for this exercise are the questions themselves. The setups should not be written out and the answers to the questions should also not be written out. This is another exercise of creating the language and, and practice, right? Practice setting up your questions before you do it and practice responding to the questions before you upload to Flipgrid, okay? So that you get a good response, you get a good uh, video response. If you wanna use um, a mind map, an outline to answer your questions, to figure out, okay, what do you want to speak, speak about? That's okay. But again, we don't want to read anything as a response. So this is, this Teacher, is how- I have a question. All right, go ahead. Uh, all of this is going to be like, we have to do it uh, right now, like during class, or we have also like an extra time during the day. Well, I'm going to give, like I almost always do, um, I'm going to give the give you guys the rest of today to complete the task. If you don't complete the task, then I'm going to ask to try to complete it outside of class. Okay. All right. So thank you. It's eight. You're welcome. It's 844. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mute my mic. We'll go ahead and uh, continue with this activity. Try to get as much done in class as you can. And we will reconvene. We will come back at uh, 940 to close the class. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic, guys. If you have any questions, of course, as always, jump in, ask, or send a message in Microsoft Teams. Teacher, I have a question. 
Okay. Before you go. Okay. Uh, uh, just let me know if I'm I understand what we are going to do. Okay. So we have to do like two videos in Flipgrid. Uh, one like making uh, hey, cómo? Uh, one like making uh, our questions to our partner, and the other uh, when we have to respond like a famous person, right? That's correct. That's Only correct. That? That, that's it, but make sure that the questions include the setup for each question. Make sure that the questions themselves are also in Microsoft Word written out along with the verbs, right? Mm -hmm. And and yeah, and that's, that's it. Uh, okay, teacher, thank yes. you. You're welcome. Anybody else so have teacher, any? Teacher, in my case, yeah. mm -hmm. I have to do three videos, right? Uh, if you don't mind, please. Yeah. Okay. Is that right? No, it's okay. Okay. Thank you, Monte. Any other questions, my friends? <laughs> no, thank you. All right. I'm going to go ahead and mute my mic. Just jump right in if you guys have doubts or if you want me to look at, uh, at your questions. Um, I really would like to uh, make sure that your questions are grammatically correct. So make sure that you have... The correct word order, right? That uh, that your grammar is correct in the questions that you're going to ask your famous person. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute my mic, and just jump in if you have questions. Teacher, don't go. Yes. Uh, the poker video is going to be for today in this class. Again, to be between my classmate and me. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that you can finish. I hope that your your classmate is here and uh, is able to uh, begin by posting the first video of the questions. All right, because that's it's going to okay. depend on your classmates. So I understand that some classmates are out, and I, I understand that. So it's no problem if you need to finish this after you know later today. It, but the interviewer yeah. has to to begin has to be the first person to uh, to po to post the video response with the questions and then the um, and then the famous person will respond later so hopefully you can do that today if your partner is here and you know you're working you know you're you're he or she posts then you know I hope that you can finish in class yeah. for example in my video i'm gonna it's gonna look, i'm gonna appear just me or my interviewer too no just you and yeah you're the interview the interviewer is going to appear by himself or herself right and and you're going to respond just appearing yourself but in flipgrid it's going to be a video response it's like you're it's like uh you're you're replying to their video response Right, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yes, it I get it. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, guys, I'm recommending that uh, you double check. In fact, um, check for any comments in Microsoft Word before you post. I'm going through right now checking grammar and uh, just checking for clarity. So make sure they're open questions, specific and grammatically correct. I would double check Word before you post your video to Flipgrid. Okay, teacher. Uh, you, you put in a comment in my question. Um, and I'm confused because you say uh, be more specific and one of my question is um, how did you decide to be a singer? It is general that. Well, um, if, if you can, it, I guess it depends on how you set it up. Um, think about what you're going to say before the question. And so maybe in the context of what you say, the question that you ask is related to what you said. So if you're talking about maybe you're describing the situation where the singer began his or her career, the question could have some of the words that you mentioned in the setup. Does that make sense? Uh, for example, I have 
to investigate about J Singer and for example, uh, I know that your childhood was very poor. So, y luego ya decirle la pregunta and then ask the question. Right, and, and maybe, exactly, but maybe you can say a little bit more instead of just those those few words, but yes, that's the idea. You could say, I know that you grew up in a household uh, with little money and little food on the table, blah, 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 and then state the question. Okay, and the another one, I, I want to know if it's right. It says, um, can you explain me the meaning of the zombie song? Is that good or not? That's fine. Yeah, that's good. Okay. But uh, just think about how you want to set it up, how you want to just, you know, uh, prepare, set up the, the question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Remember, guys, in your question that the your classmate is role-playing. So your classmate is pretending to be the famous person. So these questions need to be as if you were asking the famous person. So keep that in mind when, when you're writing up your uh, questions. You guys, as I'm uh, checking, uh, some of the comments I'm leaving is related to how specific you can be. Think about um, if you're not sure about whether or not a question is specific or not, think about, can I ask <clears throat> the same question to other artists or other musicians, other actors? And if the answer is yes, then it's probably too general. So, for example, if you ask, why did you, be, why did you, um, why did you become an artist? Why did you become a musician? Well, I can ask that question to any musician. So think of a question that you cannot ask every musician that's specific to that artist, to that individual, to that person. And so it's probably going to relate a lot to how you set up the question. Think about how you're going to set up the question, what specific aspects of what you're going to say before the question right, is going to lead into a more specific type of question. Just think of a maybe a personal experience, maybe an event in that person's life that you can reference or provide as context to set up the question. And again, maybe the questions that you're asking can include some words that come from your setup. Hey, guys, take a look at the Word document. Make sure uh, you're changing your questions before you're posting to Flipgrid. If you have any questions, of course, jump in. Um, mainly, my feedback at this point, try to be more specific. Make sure that the questions are open. And remember that you're asking in the second person. Not, not, in, the, uh, not in the third person, but the second person, because you're you're assuming you're asking these questions to the famous person directly. Okay, so double check my feedback and uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right, guys, it's 940. I want to go ahead and conclude for today. Uh, one of the things that I hope you realize as we're working on these questions is it's, it's not that easy to come up with good interview questions. Uh, a good interview question when you're when you're interviewing somebody famous think about put yourself in the shoes of the famous person and that famous person probably gets asked the same questions over and over and over so a good interview question especially when you're talking about a famous person the is that the person who's asking the question knows the person you can tell by listening to the questions of the interviewer if the person, if the interviewer knows a lot about the famous person. So I want you to do the same. I want you to think about what do you already know about this famous person as the interviewer when you're asking the questions. If you say, well, why did you want to become a basketball player? Right? You could ask that question to any basketball player around the world. Right? Why did you become a basketball player? Try to think instead of a question that relates 
to some personal experience, something that you know personally about the, the individual, and then ask a question that relates to that specific event, that specific uh, occasion, right? Something that happened, either, you know, if it's a sporting event, some sort of a musical event, maybe it's a movie, you're actually asking about a particular movie. I think those are really good questions. Okay, so think about trying to ask very specific questions. Make sure that you're asking, you're, you're organizing the question grammatically correct, right? That you're, the word order is correct, the verb tense is appropriate. Sometimes it's appropriate to write in the past tense, sometimes in the present. But depending on what you're asking and what you're saying, then you need to ask in the past tense or the present tense, right? So double check your grammar, double check that you're being specific, make sure that you're not asking open questions, right? I'm sorry, that you're not asking closed questions, that you should be asking open questions. And yeah, make sure that you are looking at my feedback before you upload to Flipgrid. All right. Um, I think tomorrow we're going to have, um, we're going to begin tomorrow's class with another listening, TOEFL listening. We're going to have another one on Friday. Um, I want you to really think about these questions. I don't want you to rush into the video, doing the video uh, questions until you're very comfortable with the questions that you have. And uh, I would like that you receive feedback from me before you upload, unless you're 100% certain that you have very good questions. Um, I think what we'll do tomorrow after our listening, I'll give you additional time to continue developing your questions and give you time to develop your setup. Remember today, the key aspect of our questioning is not just having good questions, but also preparing and being able to set up a question. Remember, a setup is simply, in our case, one or two sentences, just a, a couple of um, ideas mentioning the context of the question, and then you follow up with the question itself. All right, so I want to be very specific in this assignment. I'm looking for very specific things for very specific reasons. I want us to be able to ask grammatically correct questions, for one. I want us to be able to ask intelligent, specific questions to the famous person, as if this were a real person, um, and that you're asking questions that reveal that you know something about the person that you're interviewing. Okay, so again, this might require that you check Wikipedia, check a little bit to get a little bit more information about the person if you're not that familiar with this individual. All right, guys, any questions about today's activity? Any questions, my friends? No? Please double check my feedback in uh, the Word document. I've, I've tried to leave as much feedback as I can. I think I left everyone feedback. If I didn't, uh, let me know. Once you've made the changes and you're confident of those changes, you can go ahead and remove my comments from the Word document. Of course, if you want me to look at your questions again before you post the, inter the interview video, um, let me know. I'll take a look at it before you upload. Remember, though, that everything is in the second person. All right, guys, we'll stop there. I uh, hope you guys have a good day today, and we'll continue tomorrow. We'll begin with um, our listening review, our TOEFL listening review, and then we'll follow up. We'll have some additional time working on this activity. All right, thanks, guys. Take care. Okay, thanks, Jay.